am Rafael Colantonio, president of Arcane and co-creative director of Dishonored. I'm Harvey Smith, co-creative director at Arcane on Dishonored as well. Uh, Dishonored is a first-person action game. It's uh, very immersive. It's, uh, you play a supernatural assassin in a retro future world and you can combine the mechanics in ways uh, that make your play experience feel um, very customized, very improvisational. Uh, it is a stealth game, so you can approach everything either high combat, constantly, uh, you know, calling down all this chaos on your head, or you can like sneak and nobody even knew you were there. So the game is around assassination, so in general we give you tools that are related to the best way to assassinate people. Uh, that includes uh, powers, uh, supernatural powers, such as uh, uh, teleporting to a target so to surprise it, and, and then killing uh, in, in one attack, or uh, uh, freeze time so that you can actually take this opportunity to uh, shoot at like one, two, three, four, five targets, and then like when time resume, all of, all of them are dead at once, right? Or things like possession so that you can possess a, a, a person and, and use him to infiltrate an area without being recognized. Uh, so this is you know all the arsenal that you can think of as an assassin. Yeah, we have. Uh possession, stop time, uh, short range teleport called blink, we have uh, wind blast, we have a whole suite of powers that uh, don't drain your mana, they, uh, you know, when you kill somebody they turn to ash, we have things like that. We have a, uh, a variety of uh, powers related to stealth, like, uh, you know, there's one that lets you uh, see which, see how the enemies see, it's very strange, uh, it's a, kind of a weird night vision mode. Uh, so there's, there's a slew of abilities and you can upgrade them all. You can upgrade your weapons, you can collect money and upgrade your weapons in a variety of ways. You can upgrade your powers, uh, you can't have all the powers, you can have some subset of them. And then you can also find bone charms that add little perks to your uh, abilities as well. So actually, uh, something we haven't shown in the demo uh, is, uh, you, you, you have noticed maybe the, um, there's a tower that shoots actually at the, at the player and you could also invert that one for example. So the conversation, we, we really encourage the player to explore, uh, read the notes, you know, know more about the world, overhear conversations. Some of the conversations are more for the purpose of background, so that you get more idea of how the world functions. But, but some of them are actually like, uh, have a, uh, you know, hints to like, maybe they will reveal a secret passage somewhere or like uh, uh, somewhere to go to wait for a per specific person. Uh, so that's the idea, yeah, that we encourage you to, you know, really observe the world and get advantage of it. We started with London, uh, 1966. We, 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 at, the, at the beginning, we were very historical about it. We were just like, okay, we're going to make this... Uh, I think you meant 1666. 1666, yeah. What did I say? 1966. All right, 1666. <laughs> okay. So we started with London in, in 1666. And uh, we wanted to be very historical about it. Uh, and I think that's... That's the way Viktor Antonov, one of the, you know, the, one of the person that helped us creating this world, likes to work as well, which is to start with something real. And then we add layers, we add what-if scenarios to uh, deviate from reality and, uh, and make it our own world. Even though it still looks real, it still feels real, but it's not, which, which, is the, which is the interesting part. Yeah. We also saw um, those big white pedal walkers at the end of the demo as well. Are you going to get to maybe uh, some control of any of those, or will there be any of that kind of thing, vehicles, that kind of stuff? Well, there's an interesting uh, development moment around that because, you know, we, we push for this possession power, and uh, the level, earliest levels of it let you possess dogs, rats, fish, things like that, so you can find alternate ways through the world. Uh, the higher levels of it lets you possess humans. But the way we set all our powers up is we want them just to be generally applicable. It's, it's not you can possess that guy because we scripted the uh, mission around it. It's, it's just generally applicable. And so uh, you can do things to the, those guards are called tall boys. They walk around on stilts. They have this very retro future look. And they're, they stand above the, the crowd so they don't get the plague from the weepers. And they're out of the muck and out of the rats and out of the, out of the, up above the streets. And so if you possess them, you can possess them and walk around as them. If you uh, jump with your supernatural jump ability and catch them unaware, you can assassinate them. Uh, so they, they, wor they work in a very general purpose way. They're not, they're not some scripted thing. We, we do, for instance, have uh, high chaos, low chaos, you know, high combat, high stealth achievements, of course. Um, and we have mission completion achievements. But uh, we also see achievements as a, as a way to encourage the player to sort of explore the edges of the simulation. Like if we have features in the game that other games don't have and we have 
potential combinations and creative ways to kill people, creative ways to slip past them, creative ways to combine things, then we, you know, we want to, we want to like throw some achievements in that direction as well. Not just players doing things very difficult, or, uh, but but also like doing things creatively. Earlier, Raf talked about stopping time in a room with six guards and firing a crossbow bolt in the air at each one and then when time resumes all the crossbow bolts hit at once and they all die at once that's a good example of like imagine like achievement unlocked you know you killed six people in one second you know that, that kind of thing so uh, there are even crazier stories about uh, different co combinations well just the one about like I mean this is a huge achievement like being able to finish the game without killing anyone uh, you know that that would be an interesting one well, certainly we're both huge fans of Bioshock. Uh, we're both excited about uh, the upcoming uh, Deus Ex. We both love Skyrim, the Elder Scrolls games. We love the Fallout games. Um, we go back way we we go back way far. We've been making games for 18 years, both of us, and we both love Thief. We both love System Shock One and Two. Stalker. Stalker is a great example. We love Far Cry Two. You know, there there are games that are close to our values, like Mirror's Edge, that have all these features that we love. So. I, I would say that all those games that we just named, like if you take those, you could, uh, you know, even the work that Raph has done on Arx Fatalis and Dark Messiah, and I'm best known for working on Deus Ex. I mean, if you take the values of all those games, uh, some Dishonored is somewhere in there. The game ships in 2012.